Clouds. We're going to classify clouds, draw some clouds, talk about how clouds are classified by height. Um, so I'm going to draw a line across the bottom, represent the ground. It's going to take about half my paper. If you want to draw really large clouds, you can take up the whole page if you want. Along the side, I'm going to put elevation altitude, just to give us a rough idea. At the very, very top, we have cirrus clouds. Any cloud that has the name, the prefix cirro or cirrus is at a higher elevation. So on the left, we're going to write miles. So one mile, two mile, three, four, and five. These are all approximations, but about. The very, very highest clouds, called cirrus clouds, are very thin and wispy. And these are the only clouds that are actually not a liquid, rather they are a solid. So they are water in the solid form, and the cirrus clouds are tiny frozen water droplets. Cirrus. Sometimes you look at the sun and you'll see a ring around the sun. That is also tiny, tiny water droplets that are frozen. It kind of looks like there's a ring. That's because there's the sun bouncing around on those tiny water droplets. Now, next we're going to write another type of cirrus cloud. This is much more sheet-like. This is called a cirro, using the prefix, the Latin prefix, cirro meaning high, cirro stratus. These are sheet-like. Look like a puffy little sheet that's been pulled across the sky. And we also have zero cumulus. Now all of these have the prefix zero or zero. Cumulus, those are a lot more puffy. They're very high altitude puffy clouds. These are more like the cotton ball clouds, but they're all very, very high altitude. Four or five miles up. The next layer down. These are the middle level clouds, and if you're a singer, you would know that the middle range, the middle register, is alto. So, lower sheet-like clouds are called alto stratus. They're lower sheet-like, middle level mid-level sheet-like. And we also have puffy clouds at that, at that middle level. So they have the prefix alto. And since they are puffy, they are called cumulus. So they're mid-level puffy clouds. And we have the lower level, which all have the root word stratus. So we have 
Nimbo, Stratus, we have Strato Cumulus, and we have regular Stratus Clouds. Nimbo mean clouds that are associated with rain. They don't always rain, but if it's going to rain, it's going to be Nimbo Stratus cloud or the very, very last cloud that we're going to draw. Stratocumulus clouds are low level, strung together cumulus. They're all somewhat together. Sheet-like, puffy, low-level clouds. Stratus, those, those gray days in which it's just lots of clouds that cover the whole sky. And everyone's favorite, ones that look like rabbits or maybe a duck. Those are cumulus. Those are the puffy clouds. And there's two more clouds we're going to draw. Everyone's favorite, and especially mine, is one that starts near the bottom and grows vertically. Often these are called anvil clouds because they grow and they spread out at the top. They develop and they grow bigger because when they condense they release that latent heat, that hidden stored heat, and that forces the air up higher because it releases that heat energy and it grows large. This is the cumulo, meaning puffy, nimbus, meaning rain. And oftentimes associated with these cumulonimbus clouds is lightning. very very last cloud that's the one that you can actually walk through and that is a cloud right on the ground that's a lazy little cloud forms when warm air moves over cold land often you find this near rivers or lakes and that is fog all right so we're going to separate this a little bit Stratus clouds are low level. Alto, mid level. And high elevation are zero. And of course, if it's puffy, that is, has the cumulo or cumulus name attached. And if it rains, it has nimbo, nimbo, rain. So because we're scientists, we love to classify anything and everything we can. To me, what's important is knowing what clouds may cause rain. Dark clouds allow light to pass straight through. And if it is a nimbus stratus, it's possibly going to rain. And a cumulonimbus cloud, a thunderstorm cloud, that is most likely going to rain. Predicting cloud and cloud cover depends on relative humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air 
what, what we use in weather and forecasting weather is relative humidity. Relative humidity is actual water in the air and divided by the total water that can remain in the air at that temperature. Now, we represent relative humidity by a percent, so we multiply this by 100%. Now, actually calculating relative humidity actually uses the water vapor density, and there's a lot more math, but we're just going to use charts in predicting.